I am here to make your first fixed gear purchase easy because it sure wasn't easy for me, but it should have been. Here are my top three beginner fixed gear bikes that I personally wouldn't hesitate to spend my money on. A lot of what I talk about in this video will reference my previous video, how to spot great beginner fixed gear bikes. So if you haven't watched that yet, do click the card above so you know what the heck I'm talking about, and then you can hop on over back here. Without further ado, here are my top three beginner fixed gears that for me are no brainer buys, along with some honorable mentions that didn't quite make the cut. First and foremost, you guessed it, it's the reigning champion of beginner fix your bikes. It is the Kilo TT Pro. The Kilo TT Pro is constructed of double butted Reynolds 520 steel, which is just 4130 chromoly with a fancier sticker. And the frame set comes with a lugged flat crown fork, which points to quality in the rest of the build. Moving on to the wheel set that also ticks a lot of boxes on the great beginner bike checklist, we have Alex G6000s or you don't have a choice because choices are overrated apparently, or Alex sub rims. Both of these rims will be 30 millimeters, so they do balance ride quality, durability, and weight. And because they are Alex branded, you can expect to get a consistently okay rim, which is good because a lot of other bikes in this price range have rims that are far worse than okay. The rims on the Kilo TT Pro are laced to seal bearing formula hubs, which helps the longevity and the resale value of the wheels. The stem handlebars and seat posts are generic but functional and they look good enough. Not all generic parts are equally made, but the ones on the Kilo TT Pro are in the middle of the road as far as quality goes. This bike is made in Taiwan and also comes with front and rear Tetro brakes and levers, which give you that budget but great feeling stopping power. The Kilo TT Pro checks off all the boxes on the Great Beginner Fixed Gear Checklist, and it also goes beyond that. This bike comes with the Sugino RD2 crankset. Sugino makes mid to high end cranksets, and their name is a mark of high quality for a reason. So it's especially nice to see their crankset on a bike at this price. Something else to note is that this bike does have the necessary mounts to put on a rear rack, which is kind of odd for a track bike, but if you're willing to sacrifice those those clean aesthetic lines of the fixed gear. In the name of practicality, you have that option available to you. Not everything about the Kilo TT is great though, and some compromises had to be made to keep the price down. Although the finish looks pretty classy with the chrome tips and the paint looks pretty sharp, the paint is flakier than buying a box of cereal on Craigslist. Quality control on the Kilo TT forks really sucks. It comes down to the luck of the draw, whether your fork will fit a 23C Tire Max or upwards to a 32C tire max. Speaking of iffy clearances, although the Kilo TT Pro comes with eyelets for fenders, you may or may not be able to use them just because the clearance might not allow them to fit. Or maybe you get lucky on your particular frame set and it does allow it to fit. Who knows? Certainly not the factory. And for some reason that I've yet to figure out, the stem and seat post are non-standard sizes. The seat post is 26.8 millimeters and the stem is a threadless one inch steerer, which really limits your choices if you want to swap out these components. And probably the biggest drawback of the Kilo TT Pro is that although it's such a great deal, it is only readily available in the US. With that said, if you are in the US, this is one of the best, if not the best, beginner fixed gear that you can buy. If I could redo my beginner bike, the Kilo TT would be it. If you're not in the US and you still want a great beginner steel fixed gear bike, the next bike has you covered and is readily available in most parts of the world. This is the Fuji Feather. It retails at an MSRP of 550 US dollars. And at that price, I think it's a little bit too expensive. Luckily, you can easily get an older model on clearance and get the price down between $400 and $500, at which point it is a very good buy. And don't worry about getting an older model because all of the Fuji feathers are the same except for the paint. The Fuji feather frame set is made of double budded Helios 2 Cromoli, which is just Fuji's attempt to try to be special in the marketplace. For all intents and purposes, it's 4130 Cromoli. The Fuji feather comes with a flat crown lugged fork, and the welds on the feather aren't too shabby either. Something to take note about this bike is the quill stem. It adds that classic look, and it has some benefits and drawbacks compared to a threadless stem, but that's a whole nother discussion that I'm not going to get into here. The wheels are Veracorsa 30mm deep rims, which are about on par with Weinman and Alex rims. In other words, that's fine. It's fine. Although the wheelset doesn't come with seal bearing Novatec or Formula hubs, it does come with seal bearing hubs, which are still good enough for daily abuse. 
Like the Kilo, the components are generic, middle of the ground, and nothing to write home about. Which is a good thing, because if you do write home about generic components, it's, it's usually not very nice. An advantage that the Fuji Feather has over the Kilo TT is that it includes drop bars and flat bars, because drop bars ain't for everybody. The Feather comes stock with 25C Vittoria Zafiro tires, which is about one notch better than the Kenda tires that come on most bikes in this price range. Because of that, the Feather will have a slightly nicer ride quality out of the box. Overall, with the Fuji Feather, you're getting a very similar bike to the Kilo TT, with slightly lower quality wheels cranks and brakes. At about 500 US dollars or less, this next bike is a really great bike if you're looking for aluminum. And the value of this bike is on par, or even better, than the crazy value of the Kilo TT. This next bike, or series of bikes, are the Aventon Completes. The Aventon frame sets are constructed of double butted 6061 aluminum. And all the bikes have smooth polished welds and come with carbon forks. The Aventon Matero and Matero Low have really cool looking fancy hydroform tubes. The Aventon Cordoba on the other hand has a simpler tube profile but comes with a fancy pants tapered head tube to add a lot more stiffness in the front end. And if you're getting an aluminum bike of course you want stiffness. The wheel set has in-house branded 30 millimeter deep rims. I've never ridden these rims myself, but these people seem to really like them and say that they're durable, smooth, and affordable. I have seen these rims in person though, and the finish looked considerably nicer than the standard Alex or Wyman rims, so kudos to events in there. And of course, these rims are laced to seal bearing Novatec hubs, so you can ride without having to worry to maintain your hubs. The wheels certainly look pretty in person, as do the other components. And I would say that the in-house branded crank set, stem, seat post, and handlebars look a lot better than the middle of the ground generic components on most bikes in this price range. The crank set is also 144 BCD, that's bolt center diameter. This means that you can use those fancy, durable, and smooth track chain rings without having to upgrade your crank set. The stem and handlebars are also 31.8 millimeters for that extra front end stiffness. And all the events and completes come with a pre installed Tetro front brake. The Aventon Complete's weakness lies in the distribution. It's only readily available in the US and much less so in Canada, and it is only available in one location, count them, one location total in the following countries. Chile, Uruguay, Puerto Rico, France, the Philippines, and Vietnam. And that's it. So to recap, it is a bit unfortunate that the fixed gear market outside of the United States is kind of lacking for entry-level bikes. But if you are in the US, the Kilo TT Pro and Aventon Completes are really great deals. And if you're outside the US, the Fuji Feather is also a really nice beginner bike. Those are the no-brainer bikes, but there are also other bikes on the market that are worth considering. These bikes didn't quite make the cut because of their availability or because of the lack of information on them. The first honorable mention is the Pure Fix Premium at around $400, depending if it's on sale or not. At $400, this is a very valid alternative to the Fuji Feather and it is readily available in the United States and Europe. The next honorable mention is the $350 BLB London Low Pro, and this is a stupid deal. At full price, the frame set alone retails for $400, which is more than what the Complete is going for right now. At full price, the Complete would be $800, and it's currently $350, so you should hop on that. The problem with the BLB London Low Pro is that it has an extremely limited quantity, and once they're gone, I'm pretty sure that's it. But if you can get one in your size, this is by far the best deal for a beginner bike. And the last honorable mention is the $400 Crew District from City Grounds. In a vacuum, the Crew District is a fine bike, but for $50 more, you can get an Aventon, which I think is way worth the money. Those are my recommendations for your first fixed gear bike. If you have experience with any of these bikes or with other bikes that you think might be a great buy, please do comment that below to help out the first time riders because options are nice. And with that, I hope you get your first fixed gear sooner rather than later. But if you have a bike and you've already ridden it today, why don't you reward yourself with another video? If you haven't ridden your bike yet today, stop watching me right now, get on your bike and have a good time. And remember to stay reasonably dangerous.